So in this video, we'll just take a closer look at these network switches here from D-Link. These are multi-gigabit switches, does have one 10 gigabit port, but rest of them is 2.5 gigabit. So five 2.5 gigabit and one 10 gigabit. And I actually bought two of these because I kind of need eight ports for my devices, for my computers and so on. And my plan is just to hook these up with the 10 gig ethernet between the two and then connect my devices to them. And yeah, I also have them placed separate places here in my office. So it makes it a little more convenient because they are just replacing my current Netgear switch, which kind of resembles the design of this D-Link here, but these are only one gigabit connection, only the two out here on the side is 10 gigabit, the rest of them is one gigabit, and since most of my computers nowadays is 2.5 2 gigabit per second, including my NAS servers, uh, I think it's like time to upgrade to a little bit faster switch here to get 2.5 at least throughout all of my devices here. So this one is an unmanaged switch, uh, unlike the Netgear one here, which is a very nice managed switch. Actually, really like this switch. Has been very stable for me. But an unmanaged switch and also power efficiency. I'm really curious to see how power efficient it is compared to again the Netgear here, because yeah, the Netgear does get quite warm to the touch, and also have a little bit beefier power supply included. So maybe I can save a little bit. Actually, just running this one here instead. Full metal casing does have quality of service management, but that's only really a button on the back, which prioritizes the ports based on the number. So one is prioritized and then down the line, multi gigabit, or oh, I believe there's just multi band because it can use, of course, up to 2.5 gigabit or 10 gigabit on that one port, but it can also just use one gigabit, 100 megabit and so on. Silent operation because there's no fan. A lot of these switches do have fans, especially if you want some of the more high-end switches, which I have definitely have been very tempted at getting, but I'm not really a big fan of a fan in my devices. So yeah, I definitely prefer having a silent operation. Multicolored LED, which is kind of nice, but the best feature with these kinds of switches, including the Netgear one here, you can see there on the back, there is a little switch to turn off all the light. Again, I'm using this in a home slash office environment. So be able to turn off all that blinking light is definitely a big bonus for me as well. And it's also just plug and play. Little D-Link branding here on the top. Nothing really there on the side. On the bottom here of the box, you do get some more information here in many different languages. And of course, you can see the model number there, DMS-106 XT. On the back, of course, here you can see some more information about the router, all the ports, and you have that turbo mode there, so you can kind of prioritize the network ports. I believe 10 gigabit is prioritized as the first one, and then one, two, three, four, and five of the 2.5 gigabits are prioritized. So yeah, if you want to need that feature, you can turn it off, on. I plan to just leave that off. I just have the same prior prioritization on all my devices connected. It's kind of a hard word to say, but anyways, let's just get into this one here and just have a closer look at what we actually get in the box. A little bit of D-Link branding here on the top of the lid and yet another security seal you have to cut open. So yeah, you have to cut three seals open here, but yeah, added protection. So you know there's nobody been in here for you. And then we are just met with the network switch here, nicely presented in the top. And yeah, okay, feels very nice quality. Like my Netgear, they're also very high quality, very beefy and heavy. We get some information here. Declaration of conformity. Okay, I'm not really sure what that is. You get a very, very short quick start instructions here quick guide, only really a piece of paper they're folded in half. And what they're pretty much telling you here is just to plug it in and plug whatever device you want into the, the little switch here. And of course you have to prioritize it, you know, one, two, three, four, five in that order. If you like have a gaming PC and you want to prioritize that, you have to connect it to the one. And of course you can connect your NAS server to the 10 gigabit per second port and that would be getting highest priority. But I just plan to connect these two switches together using that port. But anyways, you can of course set it up specifically for your need. You also get a few QR codes here so you can go download 
Oh. Go check your warranty and support here on D-Link's website. It's been a long time for me since I had a D-Link device. I did have a few routers bikes back in the days. Never really had an issue with their devices. But anyways, you also get a UK plug. This is for the European market, of course, UK plug. And also the European plug there, which is the one I'm going to use. And next off, we do get a quite a bit smaller power supply compared to the one that's included with my Netgear. I believe it is... 1.5 amp, yeah, 1.5 amp, 18 watts. So I hope I can save a little bit of power. I believe the one for my Netgear is 2.5 amp. And also, like I said, does get quite hot to the touch. So maybe I can save five wattage between two routers that's 10 watts an hour. That's still, still something I probably can feel on my wallet at the end of the year. But anyways, normal little power supply there and of course you just plug in whatever plug you use in your region of the world. I like said live here in Europe so I will just use the European plug but depending on where you buy this you will of course get a plug that fits your market. So that's pretty much it and that's pretty much all we get in the box. And lastly here of course we have the router itself. Let's just get it out and actually it does weigh quite a bit more than I was anticipating. Definitely a very well built. You can also see there on the bottom there, nice big rubber feet in each corner. Some grooves there on the bottom. I'm not really sure if it does anything for cooling or if it's just easier to make it this way in manufacturing. On the side here, nothing really, but this groove along the side here and on the front is where you also have that RGB light that also kind of indicates what kind of speed you are running on your device throughout the ports. And you also get here on the top a little status LED when you can see there's activity for each specific port here. So five 2.5 gig and one 10 gigabit port here. Quite nice and again you can turn those off including the ones on the front which is definitely a big thumbs up for me. The other side here another groove but yeah definitely feels very high quality a little bit higher quality than I would have in, like I said anticipating because it's not really super expensive. It does cost a little bit more to get this one here. You can get a lot of these you know, five port, 2.5 gigabit Ethernet switch is a little bit less expensive, but not really that much. But the nicest feature around the back here is you can disable those LEDs. Definitely something I will do. You can also enable turbo mode. So you can, like I said, prioritize one. I believe it prioritizes the 10 gigabit first and then one, two, three, four and five. So you can kind of set it up to you have your most important device on the 10 gigabit and then you can just go down the line there. Like I said, I just plan to leave it on, so all ports would have same prior orientation. And you can, of course, kick and connect your 12 volt, one and a half amp adapter here. The one to come included, but this is also a fairly standard plug, so very easy to replace. Should you do need to do so in the future, and of course, you do have some D-Link branding here on the top. And let's just compare a little bit here to my Netgear one. The Netgear are definitely more heavy. But yeah, feels maybe a little bit more sturdy. But you can see it also is significantly bigger than the D-Link one here, at least in terms of depth and also in terms of height, which is kind of hard to see from this angle here. So let's just flip them up. And you can see kind of a chubby little boy here, the Netgear one compared to the D-Link. And also it is a fair bit deeper here as well. So. Yeah, we'll save a little bit of space, but still have the same kind of design aesthetics. I like this design ish here where you can just put it on the table and it doesn't really scream that this is a switch you have sitting there. Switches are not generally the best design devices. They are more utilitarian compared to like other devices you have in your home environment or the office environment rather. But I'm just curious to see actually which one of these two weighs the most. I haven't really looked at the specifications. So let's just put it on the scale here and see. You can see a big difference. This is like 671 grams. So it's, like I said, still pretty beefy and feels like high quality. But this one, I believe we are definitely over a kilogram or something like that. Uh, we're close to a kilo actually, 925 grams. So yeah, definitely do feel the heft. It does also get quite warm to the touch, like I said, because it does draw, draw a little more power as you can see here on the back. It does require 2.5 amp, so potentially it could use up to one amp more, of course, depending on how much you have 
or how many of these ports you have actually utilized and how much you are drawing through this device. So let's just try and plug this one in here. Just have a look at the front first and see if we can see some color schemes there. The LEDs here in the front did turn on. Uh, you can see them now. I don't know if you really can see with all the light I have here in my studio, but lighting blue at the moment. Nothing really going on here in the front. So let's just try. Oh, now it's starting up here in the front. So these two lighting zones here, or the top light and the front light, doesn't really work together, but they do tell you what kind of connection or how what kind of speed you're connected. So the front one here will tell you the speed you're connected and the top ones here will just tell you if you have something connected and if it will flash when you have some activity or when you are using the, the line. Let's just connect here. This is my NAS server, 2.5 gigabit LAN. Let's connect this to the one here, see what happens. So you can see right at the bat there, it will light blue just to tell you that you have connected a device here on the one port but it doesn't really light up in any specific color here. Maybe I have to transfer some files or something like that for it to actually switch color here in the front. Let's try and connect it to the 10 gigabit port here and see what happens. Nothing really happens there in the front. So yeah, you probably need to connect this to your router before you see some activity. So let's just try and do that. So this is connected to my other switch, my other Netgear switch, which is the same as I showed you before. So this is only a one gig connection. Let's just try and connect it to the front here. Oh, you can see that there's actually different colors. So faster speed, you'll see the blue connection. And of course, this is only a one gig. You will see the white connection and still nothing really going on in the front here. To my understanding, the front should show you different lighting depending on what kind of speed you're connected. Yeah, the button on the back here only seems to control on and off. So you hold it in for a second. It will turn all the light off, which is the mode I'm going to use personally. And it's nice still, if you are like having issues with your network that you can just turn it on and see your stat status LED. I really like that feature. And like I said, it should also be able to tell you what kind of speed you're connected here. But I believe because I only connected to one gigabit per second to my other switch here, it would only really light white here. So let's just try and switch it out around here. I'll switch it around here because now I've connected, I have this plug here going into my other switch, which is connected with 10 gigabit per second. So should in theory show me a different color. See, I'll actually have to remove this one because that's connected to the same switch as we will make some kind of a loop back there. But it is connected with 10 gigabit per second. Let's just see if anything happens. And I've connected it to the 10 gigabit per second here as well. So it seems to take a little bit longer when you connect it to 10 gigabit per second before it actually will register anything here. Or maybe I have screwed it up a little bit by plugging. Oh, you can see here, it takes a few seconds and it does connect. And this also just show blue. Should be connected with 10 gigabit per second. Should kind of light up in different colors as you can see here on the front, depending on what kind of transfer you are in the midst of. So the RGB light in the front only really work when you are enabling quality of service. So you have to enable a little switch on the back of the device for it to prioritize your network devices, of course, according to the port layout on the back. So yeah, that's why I couldn't really get it working doing my initial unboxing. So back to the video. But anyways, looking forward to actually use this switch here. This has just been an unboxing and first look and First impression is definitely pretty nice. Like the build quality, like the more slimmer design. And I am very curious to see if this one would actually stay less warm or stay a little bit cooler to the touch compared to my other switch. And maybe also draw a little bit less power. And then again, also just have 2.5 gigabit lane throughout all of my devices, which is for me at least where it's at right now because I have it built into my desktop computers and I have it in my NAS servers as well. I feel like 10 gigabit is still a little too demanding in terms of power and energy and a lot of the switches get very warm and needs built-in fans and those who don't have built-in fans again also get very warm to the touch and use a lot of power so yeah 2.5 in terms of efficiency and price and yeah in terms of the kind of hardware you can get is where it's at for me right now but of course that may change in the future but i have definitely outgrown 
one gigabit per second Ethernet, which is still fine for a lot of things, but if you do any kind of file transfer between NAS servers and all computers, definitely 2.5 gigabits per second is a lot faster. So yeah, this has been an unboxing and first look at the D-Link DMS 106 XT. I will share some uh, affiliate link down in the description below if you are interested. You can of course go there and check it out. But that's pretty much it for this video. I hope to see you again in a future one. Until then, take care.